So let's open up the meeting. Um, has everybody checked out the minutes from the last meeting and approved those? You see the you happy with the minutes? I'd yeah. say. Yeah. I'm also. Yeah. Yeah. No. I didn't notice it. You happy with your minutes? Uh, yes. I hope so. Yeah. It should be. <laughs> okay. So we approve the minutes. Yes. With one abstention. Yeah. So I wasn't here. One abstention. And that's it. This is it. Yeah. So, um, Nikki, do you have something special you want to bring up? I did. We could do that now. Ready for that now? We could. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, David Armstrong and I have talked, um, and we debated whether or not to put me on the agenda. Um, so, I wanted to be on the agenda, but wasn't sure I could be here, so I thought it would be better to. It's <laughs> <That's> tough. <laughs> um, it's kid scheduling, I didn't know it would be um, So, the, um, I'm here on behalf of the school board. Um, and the school board is going to be hosting a school security forum on July 9th at 6 p.m. Um, I think it's a Tuesday. I can double check that. Yeah. Um, and so we wanted to formally invite you all to attend. Um, I suspect we're going to try and keep the topic on school security, but I think we're a community and the school portion of the community represents about a quarter of the town. And I just feel like it would be a good... Um, it would be a good opportunity for you to hear people um, and their concerns with school security. So, um, and then their opinions on what we should do about it. So, <laughs> so that's what I mean. uh, Nikki, at this point, does um, does the board have a leaning toward what they would like to see? We are. Um, we're really. I mean, we know what our options are, um, but we really want community feedback. We don't want to mm -hmm. go forward in any direction without community feedback. Mm -hmm. That's okay. where we are. We feel like it's, in a situation like this, it's pretty important because there are a lot of people that strongly are against it and there are a lot of people that are strongly for something and so mm -hmm. we need to figure it out. Have you done any kind of survey of all the parents or? We have not. That's part of what this is, is to get information. Yeah. Um, from families. I mean, we do know that we had um, a fair number of parents attend our community forum um, uh, what, a month or so ago, um, and there was a lot of interest there, and I know that the principal has gotten a lot of um, questions, and we've seen a lot of things posted on the listserv, and then I've gotten a lot of um, emails directed at me. So we do know that there's concern um, mm -hmm. about school security. Um, were, in light of recent events, there were a lot of parents emailing and saying, why should I send my kid to school? Is it safe? So those were hard emails to take on Mother's Day weekend. Mm. So, mm. yeah. Um, so that's what I'm here for. Okay. Okay. Talk about an exploratory meeting with the uh, Windsor police about their resources. Did, did that happen? Has that happened yet? Or? Uh, yes. Um, okay. The principal and superintendent um, met with uh, Windsor Police, um, and Windsor presented what they can do for us. Um, that they really are the only option that we have, hmm. um, and so they'll be presenting again what they can do for the school community um, at this forum. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Yep. Okay, so we have a, a couple of adjustments to the agenda. Just a note. Um, you know, uh, I guess it's, I don't know, it's Green Mountain House Association or who it is, but it's, that's who it's represented, isn't it? I'm the Queen Tea Natural Resource Conservation District. But Sue, it is about Sue Greenall. They're the ones actually getting the grant. Okay, so it's a grant. Uh, they're looking for a letter from us for uh, to support their grant application for some work on Katie Paybrook Trail. So I think that's just a matter of if we agree to uh, sign that letter. What are they doing? 
um, there's, I don't know exactly, but I know that there's a, there's a wet area as you go in from the Jennyville Road end. It goes kind of like across a swamp where there's beaver, beaver activity, and maybe on both sides. So there's, I'm not sure what they're going to do about it, but that's, that's where the work is going to happen. Do you know why you want to, are we going to wait a minute and do it when we do it? <laughs> just um, so technically you should add the two as an agenda item, and yeah. then we can probably move forward. So you need to add that as the agenda item and then in the executive session. Yeah, and the other thing is that we have uh, an offer on that. 21 Route 12 house that we need to consider. So uh, at the end of the meeting, we will go into executive session and discuss that. Okay. So, so the Katie Brook piece, you're, are we saying we, we don't want to talk about that more now, or we don't? Well, if we, we um, it's an adjustment to the agenda, I suppose we could do it right now. So you need to add it to the agenda and then wherever you want it on the agenda. No. Oh, okay. We can do it right now. Okay. Let's just do it. Uh, so, Sue Greenall, who is from West Windsor, and you may remind, she was somewhat involved in the trail ro relocation of the um, of that trail over by Best Road. Uh, she originally came to us. Uh, she is the district manager for the Ottaquichi Natural Resource Conservation District. Uh, and um, she is, she came to me about a year ago and kind of floated, you know, would you be interested in, you know, participating in a grant to shore up part of the legal trail on Katie Brook, the Katie Brook Trail. So there's a section as you come in or, or leave Jennyville towards the town forest. Uh, the trail essentially on both sides or particularly on one side is a beaver dam. It's, it's high water. It's not a traditional flow. It's high water and it's kind of on both sides of the road at this point in time. So underneath the, the road is last year, Green Mountain Horse Association came to me and said that there was sinkholes and essentially in the trail. Um, and as we're soon, Greenhall actually came to me as well with the grant prospect. So they're essentially looking to shore up the, the trail area in there um, with a grant from the Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, it's an ERG grant, it's an ecosystem rest restoration grant. And um, there's no cost to us. They'll manage the grant and the process. And I believe they've had one person out there looking at it. They've had maybe a second contractor going out to look at it. They've had Department of Environmental Conservation out there. Um, Green Mountain Horse Association will continue to provide maintenance to it. Um, she's gone with Fish and Wildlife. They looked at it. They're okay with the work. Um, so it's it's really a do nothing proposal on our part. And um, you know Sue and her district stepping up and working more with the Green Mountain Horse Association and shoring that up. Is uh, GMHA, are they putting any money in? Uh, I don't, I can't answer that. And the Ottaquichi, you don't know if they're putting money in? The, the, all I know is that it was a grant through DEC submitted by the Conservation District. Um, it could be a 100% grant or maybe there is a you know, a town match or, or a district match where she does yeah. the administrative oh, work and, and covers it. I don't know if the Horse Association put anything. And this is supposed to be this year? Yeah. I think she was shooting to apply for it this year. I think they'd like to do the work this year, but I, uh, um, I think that was the timeline. And do you know how much money for? I've heard at least $10,000 um, project in there. Um, yeah, I mean at least there's a there's there's some stabilization that needs to be. So does that mean they're done. taking out the Beaver Dam? Nope. 
the shoring up the road, the, the road itself is deteriorating underneath, essentially like a cave type situation, and they need to shore that up. And it has nothing to do with the beaver dam? Well, the beaver dam is creating the nuisance, yes. But I, didn't, I last year I made a joke about knocking out the beaver dam, and I didn't get a whole lot of laughs. In Nobody that term, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think with some of the groups involved, yeah. I don't think the beaver dam is going to I mentioned something about just taking the excavator to the beaver dam part itself and letting the water flow, you know. <laughs> Whatever that is. So, so if next winter you come in with this really nice looking coat. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there is nothing in there about, um, I was able to have Fish and Wildlife look at the area and give us the okay to move forward. Providing the ERP grant through the Natural Resource Conservation Council to design and implement repair of the cave and part of the road along the Beaver Pond. So it's, it's to restabilize the road and not to extract the beavers. Yeah. Okay. So she's asking. So all we need is a letter of consent from the town to proceed. So that is this, if you are in agreement to that, that is a letter that Gordon can sign on behalf of the board to proceed with, with that. Said she once the application is done, she'd share that with me. So that the application isn't hasn't been done. Oh. Okay. So she said she would share that once the application is done. I'm just interested in how they're shoring that up because it seems like it could be an ongoing problem. Right? It, it, it's been go ongoing for quite some time. I was up there looking at it about four or five years ago. Yeah. And I think there's a culvert across. It probably is washed out or something like that between the, what's now a beaver dam and a beaver pond and what's over on the other side because it's all kind of flat there. Mm. So, um, mm. There's no vote on that, we're just oh. Unless somebody objects. No, I don't. Okay. I don't object. Besides that, I already signed it. So, no, I think it's good. So, There's um, a shredder upstairs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Not that we shred documents here. He better just stop right now. <laughs> okay, so let's move along. Um, let's move on to old. Let's do the old business so the fund balances. Yeah. So it was kind of a light agenda. Um, so I thought this needed to be brought up going into so July first meeting of July, maybe the second meeting. Um, we may need a special one in there since the first meeting is July 1st. I don't know if we'll have the pertinent data at that point, but uh, we'll need to set the tax rate. And um, at least Matt and I have been kind of batting back this subject, you know, maybe back and forth since maybe December um, on whether to address this deficit sooner um, rather than later. Um, as you can see in the state statute that I put out to you, that it does state that for lack of more or less a plan that uh, you should tack on the difference at the, um, the next time you set the grand list. Uh, in this case, the state statute says 5%, which actually puts it pretty close to what the deficit is. 5% of the budget um, comes in at roughly 105,000. 
and um, the deficit amount uh, that I'm projecting. Now remember, this is we're still pretty early in the ball game, which is the tough part of this. Um, it's just a projection, and it's for discussionary purposes. But um, you know, it brings the deficit down to, um, and I'll get into what I call a good and bad deficit in a minute, but it brings the deficit down to about 96,939, so just under 100,000. So, um, you know, we fit into that state statute of about 5%. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, before we go into the, the budget side of it, I, I didn't notice any triggering amount in the state statute. So is it, if you have a deficit of $100, you're, you need to tack. I think there's a common down. sense denominator in here. I mean, I think everybody realizes that there's a, you know, a, a give and take year in and year out. So $100 is certainly, I think, I, I wouldn't sneeze at it, although we've yeah. been now carrying this one since for at least two to three years. And I think that, mm -hmm. um, you know, we made some adjustments um, two years ago. Um, we implemented some adjustments uh, into this particular fiscal year. Mm -hmm. um, so we've had a chance to see that. Um, and I think that it's just time to discuss this and, you know, talk about how we're going to proceed going forward. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do have another meeting or two before that point in time. But, um, you know, again, it's this seemed to be just a perfect, it was a light agenda and we're going into July, so it just seemed to be kind of a good time. Plus, Gordon brought up a good question, you know, last meeting of just, you know, where, where is the budget, you know, are we plus or minus mm -hmm. type thing? And uh, this kind of attempts in a kind of a complicated way to answer that. Um, Phil, in the last sentence here, it says, the last part of the last sentence, to be levied on the grand list of such town as will provide sufficient revenue to liquidate such deficit. So we don't think that, that, that they intend us to put 5% on if you only need 2% or okay. whatever. Yeah. So let me just so in your packet, you have um, a projected ending general fund balance. Uh, again, this is just a projection, and it is just looking at the expense side of the equation. So how are we ending up? You know, are we overspent? Are we underspent? Where are we going to end up? What it doesn't take into consideration, this is the real kind of wild card here, it doesn't take into consideration the revenues and in particular the delinquent tax collection. So we have a delinquent tax sale coming up in July. So that could bring in more revenue than we were anticipating and it could narrow that deficit. And as I pointed out to you in the packet, we have at the end of 2018, we had like 216,000 in delinquent taxes. As of today, we have about 228,000, 225,000 in delinquent taxes. So you can see if we were to nab, you know, an X amount above and beyond, then that would close the gap on our deficit. Um, I just don't know that number. And governmental accounting, there's a 60 day window after you close the books on July 1st. Uh, so any of that, delinquent tax revenue that comes in between July 1st and the end of August is fair game. We can claw that into this fiscal year. So that's beneficial and, it, and we do have that tax sale coming up in July. So um, Matt, back when we were talking about this, I mentioned back in the fall or, or early winter, I kind of mentioned the difficulty of narrowing or, or trying to grasp hold of that deficit number and perhaps it would be better to wait until we get through the summertime and fall and winter and see what this number shakes out to be after we audit it but we've also had some discussion of yeah this is you know as we got into the spending and how we have 
you know, we essentially set aside $75,000 to apply to the deficit in this year's fiscal budget. As we were eating into that, we've kind of been talking about perhaps we should address this in July. Um, so, you know, I've kind of gone both ways with this, but I do think that there is ample opportunity for us to gain on this with the delinquent taxes. Now, I did call the auditor and said, okay, auditor, you, every year you make me write a paragraph in the audit as to how we're gonna address this. Here's the statute, you know, should we be out there and, and raise the $100,000 in July? His answer was that he would prefer us to, based upon both the school and the town increase, that we are going to have based upon the last, you know, the budget that passed in March. On the school, I like a seven, we have like a nine. Um, we've got the reappraisal, kind of throwing some monkey wrenches in here, makes thing, things more complicated. Actually might be technically a good time because the tax rate may actually go down, which would kind of, from a transparent point of view, kind of hide it. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, you just seem to think that there was just too much going on. Mm -hmm. um, tackle the delinquencies and see where you end up. Now, with that, though, came the recommendation that, okay, you need to claw back at this. You know, you may want to think about it maybe over a three-year period of time. You know, so let's just say, hypothetically, we end up with like a $75,000 deficit still at the end of after everything sugars off. You know, he's talking about like throwing, just like we did this year, kind of $25,000 into the budget over the next three years or so to try and get this down. You don't hit them, we don't hit it in July, but you need to start gaining ground on this is kind of his message. Um, that's all well and good. Just know that with some of the things, our needs, you know, $25,000 in there is a speed bump for us as far as getting more material for highway or anything else. You know, anything that we add to the budget is a percent increase for us. So it's, it's, it doesn't work. The other thing is, is and Matt, you've also pointed this out. I think, Martin, are we making the second? We've made one payment on the 21 house, right? Yes. I think we've got a second one coming up in July or August, somewhere in September. there. September? Yeah. So there's been some payment made to that, meaning that, you know, of the $180,000 purchase price that we borrowed, you know, we've already paid back 38,000 of that. So if we sell it for X amount, there should be a little bit of a buffer there. We've talked about it going into the buildings and grounds fund or something to that effect. You know, it might need to be utilized for the deficit. So there's a little bit of sway here. I was kind of ready to apply it to the tax rate, but I think that the auditor makes some valid points. I think that um, I think that we need to. It would be good to get an understanding as to what the delinquent taxes, how this does sugar out. But just know that we need to, that makes the yearly budgeting just all that more interesting and difficult. Um, or we can keep pecking away at the delinquent taxes. I would point out that we have a stack of 68 property owners in my office that I need to send delinquent notices to, and we still owe 228,000, which is a pretty significant amount of delinquencies. I suspect that if everybody were to pay up on the 20 that we have scheduled for tax sale, that's about 100,000, leaving still 128,000 and 48 taxpayers out there that owe some amount of money. So um, other than some of the budgetary aspects that we've had snafus, you know, again, the county tax that we've missed in the last couple of years that have not helped us, um, the delinquencies are probably our biggest problem here. You know, we could continue to harp on the delinquencies and try and bring that down, um, but we do need to, we do need to verbalize, you know, our thoughts and that we are aware of this and we are addressing it mm -hmm. to some degree. I'm glad you called the auditor. She got some good advice. Yes. Yep. Yep. So these, uh, 
we say 100, over 100 that are not on the, that are delinquent that aren't on the tax sale. They're extra. About 48 of them, yeah. Oh. So they, they're newly delinquent, or they're, they haven't been delinquent very long, have they? Or they either new, newly delinquent or the amount is fairly small, but I don't think there's anybody on there that's more than two years. Okay. What's your letter going to say? With the one that goes out to these people? Well, the 20 for tax sale was written no, by the lawyer. No, no, not them, but oh. these other ones. It says, you owe, can you please pay? Are you going to mention <laughs> to that if they don't? Um, we are doing tax sales on a timely basis. Yeah, I believe it does say that. You know, we're not letting them go because it just will dig themselves in deeper and deeper. It, yes, it says that. Okay. I think that's important. I don't know that people have that in their heads. That, you know, we're doing that. Uh, we've had this discussion before, but obviously, March 1st of every, you know, the last two years that I've been here, you know, it's been a $525,000 number, you know, or a $500,000 number, and that's just a really, so that deadline really is, um, is is not as important to these people as it should be. We also have, I would say, maybe a dozen of people that probably shouldn't own property at this point in time, whether they're just in a disability situation or whether, you know, the affordability, you know, it's just obviously when you do the math with these people, it just their ability to pay just isn't there. Dave, um, is this, this two hundred and sixteen thousand? Does that include the delinquencies that you uh, uh, involved in the previous tax sale? The ones that I know some of them came through and some didn't. The previous tax sale last. Uh, last so they all came through. Everybody. All the property sold, but one, <coughs> and we purchased that. But you haven't collected those taxes. Oh, we paid those taxes. We're now the proud owner of that property, provided that that owner doesn't redeem by November okay, okay. 16th. So that's not part. Of, so that doesn't have. To, it's not part of this. So that's not part of that. However, he had a redeem. He had a year to redeem. So. The redemption year obviously has now gone uncollected, so that's an additional twenty-two, twenty-five hundred dollars that you know we're out. You know, just waiting for the, the year to, to tick by. Mm -hmm. We had two of those that needed to redeem, so. Dave, on the highway fund balance, you. We you have, um, you've jumped at the gun. We haven't gone there yet. We're still talking oh, general. Oh, we're still okay. Yeah, so when do you, when, what date do you need to set the tax rate by? Like? Uh, we need to, the, the tax bill needs to go out by the last week or the towards the end of July. So it being the first week, our second meeting may fall within the realm i think that might be like july 16th or something like that so we would need to set it at that point in time and i think the tax sale will happen towards the end of july so we won't by the time we set the tax rate we won't know how successful or not successful the tax sale has been however i would hope that you know of that 20 only maybe five have come forward with either a request for the board of abatement or some sort of a payment plan you know usually as this progresses down the pike and the notices pop up the mm -hmm. activity kind of becomes increases um this one is you know there's some interesting ones out there hmm.
So are you looking for any kind of action here? Um, no, I, but I think that we should have, and I think we could probably continue this discussion. You know, I, I think I feel relatively comfortable provided that we work on the delinquencies and keep an eye on that number and be aware that that deficit is out there, that um, that we close that gap. Um, it does make operations, so now that we're talking and I'm thinking about this, originally I was only thinking of the, of the 100,000 but with a hundred thousand dollar deficit in the general fund and two hundred thousand dollars dual missing delinquent, you know that's a cash flow issue of about three hundred thousand dollars, and and we are cutting it close. You know we're kind of counting the days till you know mid August that the tax you know starts coming in, and that's with a surplus on the highway of you know close to three hundred thousand, and we have equipment fund money. Um, so it is for a town that should be fairly okay at this point in time, you know, we are keeping a close eye on that. So it does create operational issues as well as a financial statement. You know, it's more than just what pops up in the audit. It does create, you know, some, some angst for Martin and from time to time me. So for next year's budget, should we just drop it by two hundred thousand dollars because it seems to me that we keep running into this every year so the answer is no okay um you can't nor should you do that because technically this is deferred so for instance you know if we have a tax sale and we get all a hundred thousand dollars in and it drops the delinquencies from two hundred and fifteen thousand to one hundred and fifteen thousand or a hundred thousand then that is revenue as to simply deferred revenue that we're now receiving. You know, we receive it probably three years after we should have. Right. But it's revenue, and then it, you know, if you don't collect it, it becomes deferred revenue. Mm -hmm. If you start then tacking on an additional $200,000 to the taxpayer, they're overpaying by a significant amount. So it behooves us to collect the taxes and not just simply let it go. I don't think that's what I was suggesting. It's an accounting answer to your question. Uh, you don't want to add additional revenue to, because from an accounting point of view, you should collect that revenue at some point. Right. And therefore, it comes in as revenue at some point. So mm -hmm. if, for instance, we drop that delinquency from 215000 to 115000 Technically, we've collected $100,000 more than we budgeted for this year, but it was revenue that we probably should have received last year. So we were in the hole last year, we make it up this year. So right. then we, if we budget in an extra 200000 now we've got 300000 I mean, it gets us out of our... If you want to do that, I would say add the 5% to the tax rate and let's get rid of the de deficit and we move on is kind of almost the same but every concept year, but every year we have these delinquent taxes uh it's a very unhealthy situation but you do and every year we we act with our budgeting process as if we're going to get all the money needed for this budget that we're proposing and we never do oh uh, you should at some point but okay, so this year we're gonna we won't get money that we budgeted for, but we'll get money that we budgeted for three years ago. So in three years we'll get money that we should have gotten this year. I mean, is that Plus, how it hopefully, works? hopefully so, that's what you you get it at some point. I mean, the idea here is is that you really shouldn't have more than thirty forty thousand dollars in delinquencies. But we always do. So. Um, but I think the other difference is with if we are committing to. Um, regular tax, yeah. regular tax sales. That's going to eliminate that gap that you're talking about. Well, hopefully, it'll put the fear of God into the people who can pay and just choose not to, and they'll pay in a timely manner. I, 
I think there's been a long history of, of you know, a last resort is to take the person to tax it. Yeah, and I agreed with that. I mean, I until we seen a person who could who spent their money on everything but their taxes. So I'm pro tax sale. Um, this five percent statute is fairly new. It looks like. Yeah. So, I think it was revised in 2018. It's actually been around for a very long time. Mm -hmm. do, we, do we have any history of doing that, I guess, is uh, my question. I'm not sure if you know that answer. Um, I, myself, have had to address it in another town. We yeah. chose to borrow money instead of doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were talking a slightly larger deficit at that point um, when it truly needed to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if Heartland, as a town, has ever addressed it. Why, why did they choose to borrow money? Because they had a uh, greater than $300,000 deficit, and they didn't want to put that on the taxpayer all in one shot. Oh. So they borrowed for three years. Okay. And then increased the taxes each year to they yeah, just, um, they had a, a yearly amount that they had to pay back over the next three years, and that's what they did. Hmm. So they had to add 100 grand to their budget over the next, soften the blow a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, still. But that's kind of what the audit is saying is, look, if you don't address it today, and you can't tackle this with delinquencies, then you should think about sticking 30 grand in a year for the next three years to pay that down. And that's also a, a difficult task for us. And you know, we've got, you know, other things that we need to, we have other needs, materials and buildings. And um, so, you know, to stick 30 grand in there and then try and fill our needs is, is a difficult task. So either way, you know, any way around it is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a chunk, so. Do you have any idea yet what the appraisals, the new appraisal is gonna do to the tax rate or? It's actually online as we speak. Um, I've looked at, I've kind of looked at it quickly. Um, I would say a majority of them, and I'm speaking in a very broad brush, stayed the same or went down. There was a segment, small segment, that went increased significantly, and there's some that um, um, increased, you know, another portion that increased, and there's also a segment that went down. So it was kind of skewed, you know, but overall, it, you know, from a general perspective, the average person hovered about the same, but the grand list did increase overall. But the grand list increases, the tax rate should go down. Decreases, right? correct? Yeah. Well, I, I just want to make sure I, I know what we're doing here now. Um, you know, we've we've talked about options, but at this point, we're we're waiting and watching uh, to see how the delinquents the tax sale in July goes, and any other additional revenues that kind of come in. So I think that if you take the, that tack, I think that we watch the delinquencies and if they d doesn't need move the needle, I think you need to look at the budget to put something in to make another stab at, you know, 
taking a you know a third out of there or something a, to a that third, effect. You know, or going with the five percent tax, whichever we feel is. It will be. Yeah, you'd have to wait until next July to do that at that point. Okay. So you do it with the. So you'd be adding five percent to the tax rate, which we set in July. We'll be mm -hmm. setting the second meeting in July. We have to set the tax rate. Bills will go out um, at the end of July. Mm -hmm. um, need to be in the mail before August. Um, or first week in August for first collection in September. Okay. Well, we have the ability to borrow money if we have to. So hopefully that's not the case. Highway fund. I think I did this backwards, but um, so I kind of put this uh, tackle them both at the same time, uh, and I put this in because last fall, or even maybe last August, when we decided to, um, or I made the pitch to add material to the roads, um, I gave an estimate of about thirty grand, and. Um, we were going to take, um, we were going to do the increased paving, and we had surplus from years prior that uh, the year before that um, we hadn't done any paving. Uh, the summer of 2017, we held off on paving altogether because of the July 1st storm. Uh, and then last summer, we held off until May, which is still the fiscal year. Um, but there was um, paving being pulled essentially money from the surplus from the prior year. Um, and I gave you an estimate of where the fund balance would fall um, from basically the 373 to about the 258 number. And I kind of wanted to true that up again with an estimate um, as to where we're at now. And again, it's just an estimate. Um, and we come relatively close to the same number. A um, couple of things that I mentioned in the last <clears throat> budget discussion was that um, we're over on the winter sand, uh, so that would eat into or push us um, over into essentially deficit spending. Um, and we also, when we did Brownsville Road, uh, we basically added a section that we were planning on doing in fiscal year 20, which is basically July or August, um, and we just decided to do it all at once, so we pulled some of that money um, from next year. So that's what that paving dollars from fiscal year 20, that bold number means. Okay. So um, that affects the fund balance, but it kind of comes back to us if we don't spend that next year because we've already spent it, um, it kind of comes back to us again from a fund balance point of view. I'm looking at this kind of a little bit differently than just plus or minus budget wise. I'm talking about a fund balance or I'm talking about the surplus. Um, we basically come back around the same number and that a good part of that is because the FEMA reimbursements were about $30,000 more than we anticipated uh, as well. So that is essentially what I'm saying is um, allow me to kind of screw my head on a little bit tighter as to where we were going to end up from a, from a surplus point of view in the highway. Uh, just know that all the extra work that we just did for the April FEMA event really is not baked into this. So that will create more of a deficit or pull down on the surplus there. But again, we get that money back next year in the form of a reimbursement, provided that <coughs> FEMA does get involved. Um, so for instance, I think there was maybe like a $10,000 bill in there from Twin State uh, that you just signed for basically hard, you know, actually one and a half inch stone. Um, a little bit from hard pack. I don't believe that's in these numbers. That is a FEMA related expense and we should get the reimbursement. That's really not in this discussion. 
This is really just more of, hey, look, I told you we were going to put down some material last fall. It should cost about 30 grand, and this is what it's going to do the surplus. We did have some overspending, um, but we had more FEMA money come in. Um, and we spent, instead of maybe 30,000, we spent about 35,000 on dropping that material. Um, you know, so we kind of end up about where I had projected. Again, that's a real funky things happen at the, at the closeout in the last month and as we get invoices in July and even into August. But again, this is a projection and, and kind of where we're going to fall. You answered my questions about the FEMA piece. I, I didn't know if the jump to 99,000 uh, was because of the recent storm and the recent FEMA event or the, the earlier one in April, I guess it was. So to give you a glimpse of the future, so the additional FEMA money was actually from reimbursement from Hurricane Irene. Okay. Remember the, um, the we closed out the Jennyville Road um, portion that had been lingering on the state's books and ours. And um, <clears throat> they're slowly but surely, I think they've got maybe 38 projects left they need to close out from that. But they're getting close, and that was one of the final ones. So that 38,000 or 35,000 was money that, you know, much like our delinquencies, was revenue expected back in like 2013 that came in this year, um, you know, and, and adds to fund balance positively or negatively. So this overspending on winter sand, was that because the sand was more expensive? Actually, I take that back. I'm salt. sorry. It wasn't on winter sand. It was on salt. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was salt. It was just that kind of a winter. Was it? Volume and price, or just volume? Mostly volume. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they use a brine mix or no? I can't answer that at the moment. We don't. Why not? Cause I've read that that's supposed <coughs> to be. Well, I've talked with people that use it, and they say it's not very effective. Really? It's a new, it's a new idea. Yeah. And it works good for some weather applications, but um. most of the time, it, it's not effective. Okay. And it's harder on vehicles. Really? Because it sprays everywhere. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so it's a huge expense. It's, I don't think we can afford to try to do it anyway. You know, well, because you need, uh, you need to be able, you need tanks to store it. And well, yeah, it especially if the spray it. results aren't 100% great. Oh, with me. So just the parting shot uh, is that um, for this past fiscal year, we, we actually, in a nutshell, because we do have a highway surplus and a general fund deficit, we pulled $75,000 of the surplus over to the deficit, um, but that didn't work quite as planned. Um, we essentially, for lack of a better term, overspent and um, ate into that 75,000. So we're only estimating about 13 to 15 of that 75,000 to be available to put towards that. Um, you know, so it's, po it's positive that it didn't add $65,000 more to the deficit. So um, in that respect, it's good, but uh, didn't quite do what we wanted it to do. But I am not advocating that we do that because I think that the highway fund needs that money. And um, I think that we're better off letting the highway fund utilize that um, into the future and, and not transfer that over to the general fund. So Dave. Yep. To get back to this thing. So maybe three years from now, yep. the budget should be about $200,000 less than it is now. 
Why? So that we don't run a deficit. <coughs> <coughs> the budget should be two hundred thousand dollars less. Yeah, no, I mean less. If we so we're building a budget, and we know we do, we're not going to get that money. We know we're not going to because there's always this big chunk of delinquencies. <coughs> so why don't we just not build it? Um, because then you'd be down three hundred thousand, not two hundred thousand. Because you're still going to have the same problem. It doesn't matter how what the budget is. What? So you can do that. You can do it one of two ways, Mary, over the next three years. You know, or you can add the five percent to the tax rate and not get all discombobulated by the, the accounting. <coughs> so you can either weave the revenue is and and, and <coughs> expense less. Um, you know, or you can just add twenty-five thousand dollars in there and or hundred thousand and tax the people more. Either way, you're taxing people more than what you need to spend and work off your deficit over the next three years, which is exactly what we're talking about. But at some point in time, you need to collect the delinquencies. You can't continue to to let two. Or 68 people not pay their taxes and run a $230,000 delinquent situation as just asinine. I, and I'm not suggesting that you do that. Okay. Okay. No, not at all. Uh, remember my statement? I'm proud of I'm with it. I'm okay. with it. So, I guess there's something fundamental that I don't understand. Yeah, and I, I can't see reducing the budget when. We didn't have enough money to finish the roof. I know, I know. Um, so I, I just, I can't even think of a, of a practical reason to do that. So let's, let me keep it simple. So you either need to tax them in July, and you're going to raise a hundred grand, mm -hmm. pure and simple, or to keep this conversation simple, was to say you're going to do it over two years. If you don't do it in July, and you say, okay, I got to. We're going to do it over a couple of years. You do it over two years. Any way, whether you, any way you want to do it, whether it's revenues or expenses, you need to raise fifty thousand dollars more than you spend over the next two years to make up the hundred thousand. I don't care how you do it, but you're going to need to raise. You need to raise a hundred grand more than you spend to get rid of your deficit. But period. next year, so let's say we we raise that and we wipe out the deficit. Yep. It's going to be another deficit next year. Why? Because people aren't going to pay their taxes again. Dave, Dave, don't we need to keep the budget realistic, though? I mean, you can't just say, oh, I don't care how you do it, because we need, I mean, our budget, budget numbers need to be um, realistic for what we're, where we're spending. And if we actually have <coughs> no way of raising this, Raising this money, maybe we ought to just do it, like it says in the statute. Either way, we'll raise the money. <laughs> let, me put, let me put it, I don't know how else to put it. Either way, we'll raise the money. Either way, you are going to tax them $100,000 more than you're going to spend in order to get rid of the deficit. Yeah. But our problems. Whether you do that in one year or three. Our okay. problems are in the general fund because of, because of uh, things that have come up, uh, like painting the activity center and, and uh, steps that I've done yet. So there is, that's an interesting conversation actually. So I would argue that part of our problem is that we are not being honest with the budgetary numbers. That's right. That's what we I just are said. wishfully <laughs> thinking that. <clears throat> so I'll let you expand. Well, I don't need to expand. That's what I just said. Okay. I think the budget num budget numbers need to be realistic to raise the revenue that we need. And if the voters don't want to paint the I'll fix the roof on the library or whatever, they should let us know. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, 
but if we have over, over underraised funds in the past, which be, appears to what we have done with the general fund, we haven't raised enough revenue. It wouldn't be a bad thing just to do it now. But that, that uh, so what you're saying then, we're going to raise, let's say we raise extra money, it's going to wipe out the deficit, we're going to address some projects that need to be fixed. We will, again, have uh, uh, delinquencies next year. And again, we will have built our budget. Mary, we cannot add $200,000 to the yearly budget to make up for delinquencies. You just can't do that. You can't do that. I don't it's, want it. It's yet. deferred oh, revenue. Right, so yeah. It is deferred revenue that you will get at some point. So the $200,000, $225,000 that we have today, mm -hmm. maybe four years worth of that. So the, the one year's delinquency may be 100,000, and you know that may get down to 50. So you know to simply add 50 grand or 100 grand is is, is your your double. You're, you're taxing them more than you need to. Collect it. I I can feel your frustration. I, you, I can feel it. Short and sweet. I've never seen anything like this, Mary. I, like I swear what? to God. Like what? What, what? What this town is experiencing from a budgetary perspective and the delinquencies that you have shouldn't be this way. They shouldn't. But so to then tack on another 250 grand to the average taxpayer to make up, how do you feel about that? So you're going to make up for the 68 people that haven't paid. I guess I feel that I'm just wondering if this town can afford itself. You know, I mean. Can I be can I be blunt? What you haven't paid for any? You, you you got rid of the buildings and grounds guy. You got five guys over there. You know, one guy takes a vacation. You got four guys trying to take care of the roads. You got one town manager. You had you know, two people in there, three people trying to get your revenue. What else are you spending it on? You haven't spent it on roads. You haven't spent it on buildings and grounds. What is it that the town doesn't have a structure and it's not functioning? So what is it that you can't afford? At some point, you got to look at this as what can this person afford and what can't they afford and say, hey, I'm on a select board. I'm a board member of this town. I have a fiduciary duty to make it function. I also need an output. You know, you've been looking at the input and you've been looking at making that the smallest input you possibly can and we've got no output. The town is Again, I'm working on a highway project that has been on the books for seven years. What else? You know, I'm working on the front steps of a building that's been five years. You know, I, what is it that we can't afford? You're not paying for anything. Well, we are in our tax. If you look at our taxes, 20%. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. For all this municipal responsibilities. And then 80% is for the school. Two separate governmental entities. Right. Two separate. I mean, I, right, but the taxpayers is paying for both. So you understood. Can't, so you know. the state has a huge property tax issue. I, you know, I think Governor Scott, I don't want to bring politics into this, I think is somewhat barking up the right tree as to trying to address property taxes and, and what that means to the average taxpayer. Mm -hmm. You can't let the town starve because all the money's going to the school. I'm sorry. Uh, At I, some point, right. the town has to function. If not, the library roof will fall in. And then what are you going to do with the books? This, you know, Damon Hall will fall apart. So, you know, as it is in the 20th century, have you ever looked in these offices and try and figure out how these people try and do their job? <clears throat> You know, we sit here in December with the freaking walls leaking and water on the, the floor over here while they're trying to do a reappraisal. Clyde's vault is so small that, you know, it, two lawyers go in there and they're bumping into each other trying to do a title search. Not to mention, you only got a couple years left of space in there anyways. Then what are we going to do? I don't know. You know, the answer can't simply be they can't afford it. At some point in time, the question has got to be, what does it take for the town to function effectively? I mean, you got me, you're paying me 40 bucks an hour and I sit in there and do, you know, 
overweight permits that somebody at 15 bucks can be doing, you know, yet, you know, the ADA, you know, and the rec center and stuff like that, you know, we could, you know, there's grant, there's, there's opportunities there that, you know, I, you know, I'm off doing little piddly stuff that, you know, you shouldn't have your town manager, you know, it's just officially, yeah, you know, you want to make the, you know, the bottom line of the lowest possible denominator that you possibly can. You know, we've done that. But at the end of the day, are we producing an efficient thing? Are we getting the most for our money? I don't think so. I mean, I'm working on two culverts that, you know, are grant eligible that have probably should have been fixed 18 years ago. You know, I don't have the time to deal with it, nor does Bill, yet we're going to lose out on money to pay for that. Simply because I'm off doing, you know, Nancy's calling me because she can't get in the library, she needs a key. You know, there's no buildings and grounds guy, you know, so I go over and do it. There is that. Like, well, there will be in a month, yes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but we, that's to the point that we got. Yeah. You know, it's costing us, you know, I hate to be like, you know, but we pinched the penny and we've gained, you know, nothing. Right, yeah. I understand that. So I think that the thought process of we can't afford it is is a deficient thought process. I think you need to look at the role of the select board and say what is you know what does the town need to effectively run at the most economical you know price tag. I think we've looked at the input quite a bit, but the output is has struggled for. Fair, fair amount of time. Oh. I just say one thing about the, about the uh, delinquent taxes, Dave. I, I'm all for every effort you make on this, but it, it's taken uh, a number of years to get to this point. I, I, it's I agree. Taken a number of years to yep. get away from it. I agree. So uh, we, we can't suddenly think that. The two hundred thousand is going to come in, and we're going to be running up what should be a thirty, forty thousand dollars a year problem. It's not going to happen overnight. I agree. <clears throat> but as that two hundred, that it's stagnated. I mean, other than the fact that we go five hundred thousand dollars in March, it's just a god awful number. We got to claw our way back. The delinquent number has hovered around 230 to 250. So if that's the number year in and year out, technically you've lost some, but then you've gained some. So you've lost some revenue and then you've gained some deferred revenue. So after a certain point in time, you, you know, we're at a working point, but the coffers are missing $230,000. Year after year after year. Um, yes, it may not affect that particular budget by two hundred fifty thousand dollars, but the town is missing two hundred fifty thousand dollars that it should have. It could have happened ten years ago. It could happen yesterday. It could happen five years ago. But it's money in the bank that we don't have. I feel like a Lance to boil here. <laughs> well, and, and, and you know, I, I, think, I think we've all been uh, knowing what's coming down the pike, and we, we continue to sort of try to sort of keep the budget as low as possible. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of um, the maintenance. I mean, the rec center needs a lot of maintenance. It's not ADA up to spec, yeah. you know, and at some point there's another lawsuit, you know, if we don't really address it. Um, you know, we have issues with the roads, with pending regulations, or whether we need to implement some of or all of. Um, yeah. There's a beautiful culvert just up the road on Brothers Road that my neighbor pointed out, and Dave was up in the area the other day looking at that. More of our, our historic culverts, the stone built ones, are beginning to fail due to the incredible rains that we've been having. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, um, I don't know, my, I have a laundry list of things that we could spend money on. 
So, uh, and it feels like every year we've been pinching rather than spending. Well, you know, I, I would feel better about the taxes if we met with the school board and I could feel that they were doing as much as we do to have a, um, a conservative budget. I don't, maybe they are, I don't know. Uh, can't you sit in on a school board meeting and voice your concern? Mm -hmm. Hey, don't spend as much money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I could. Yeah, I don't know that it would go anywhere. I can help you with the school budget. You can't touch the bed. You can't touch the teacher salaries. You can't touch insurance. Sarah and I have battled for years. And we yeah. always came out to a great end, but we battled because there's only two things we could touch on that budget. <coughs> you can't touch anything on that budget. Yeah. I was on the board with Sarah. The only thing that we made happen at the school was we put a fund together so they have money that I don't borrow money every single year. Mm. That's the only thing that we really worked out that it's helped, been enormous help. Oh, and we don't have to worry about delinquent taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Just we carry that burden. They get it regardless. <laughs> <laughs> Do they get their portion of the delinquent yeah. taxes? They get their portion. The highway fund gets theirs. Their portion. That'd make the number a lot smaller. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. <laughs> so they get paid first, me. right? The school gets paid first. They get paid. The general fund starves. So the school gets paid. The highway fund gets paid. The general fund goes without. So yeah, it would be twenty grand instead of yeah. hundred grand. So it's not even our money. And that's by statute? Or it is, yeah. Yeah, we used to get the prebate. Now we don't get the prebate. We don't like the doors to the town. They used to send the prebates to your house. Yeah. Sorry. Well, one of the things that I hear, I believe consistently, in the questions that Mary raises is a great empathy for the citizens of the community and a concern um, about whether um, long-term residents um, will be all right. And I think that one of the things that would potentially be possible would be, um, because the list is as long as 68, but it's only 68, there may be a way to figure out what percentage of that are really folks that people would worry about and might want to try to help with some problem solving that is beyond um, you know, some of the good, good responsibility of being um, a property owner in this town, which is like grow up and pay your taxes. But there may be a handful of people who are vulnerable in the way that I interpret some of Mary's questions to imply. And it's possible to look at what services are available in the community, what kind of resources to help folks, both in the short term and then with long term planning, if this is going to be, um, you know, has been an ongoing issue and could be even longer ongoing issue for them. My hunch is it's going to be a very small handful of people. It will not be very many out of that number. And, and Sarah, are you familiar with um, uh, Lyme has a similar structure to they have uh, a Mayor Campbell Fund, but they also have a, um, a private organization mm -hmm. that is targeting those kinds of needs that you're speaking of now. And I, I'm, I just became aware of it recently and I'm just trying to come up to speed on it. I, I'm not there yet. But, you know, so possibly in Heartland and maybe a spin-off of some of the community groups that are working, we could look at um, something to address those people you're looking at. Um, um, you know, again, it would have to be creative in where the funding comes from, because it's, uh, it's, it's not state funds, it's private funds, if I, as I understand it. And Bedford has also done some work in this area of finding these are kind of one-off situations and there are only a handful of them. They've been able to come up with some strategies mm -hmm. um, and, and come up with some creative solutions yeah. to them. So yes, it's the kind of thing that the, the community groups that are meeting now might be able to think about. Okay. But I think it does start 
with the discipline of expecting the taxes be paid. Mm -hmm. I'll bring up another sore subject, but um, so another problem with the delinquencies that really hampers the town is unlanded structures. Mm -hmm. So I've run into one that is actually not a movable structure, but a very solid structure with delinquent taxes that is on somebody else's property, which leaves our ability to our leverage to do really a whole lot uh, makes it difficult. So we've got a significant amount of unlanded structures. What do you mean by unlanded? A mobile home that is on somebody else's property. So it is a form of perhaps low-income housing in that it could be it could be a father or a grandfather or a cousin or something allows someone to put a mobile home on their property. Um, and unless that's addressed, and even if it's addressed correctly by the listers, to, we've got a lot of those that are delinquent. Um, kind of coincides with maybe the fact that it's, you know, a form of low income housing, but, um, and it's not a lot of money, but it's probably a, a, a portion of that 68 is this. Um, most towns in the zoning ordinance does prohibit two structures to be on one parcel without it being essentially subdivided or you know something legally so that you don't end up with two or three or in some instances five on one particular property and you get in the situation where they're delinquent um, and leaves us with, we do have recourse as far as the mobile homes go but again, it means that you know we need to evict the person. Ultimately, we need to take the mobile home. We need to take it off the property. We need to put it up for sale and kind of essentially get rid of it, which essentially makes me nothing more than really a glorified real estate agent, you know, or a distressed real estate agent. Um, you know, it, there's just a lot out there, and um, generally, um, you know, most towns have, you know, you're not allowed to do that. And from a structural point of view, it's very beneficial to the town to not be able to, to, to not be able to put two structures on one parcel and the two structures are owned by two different people. Well, we have no way to address it since we don't have it. Right? That currently we do not, but it does lead to a lot of issues in the listers department and with delinquencies. And from a 911 perspective, a lot of these pop up and we're not even aware of it. And you know, if a fire truck had to respond and you know, there's four structures, you know, it's just difficult, you know, they're not all clustered right next to each other in some circumstances. So I think we've beat this to the <laughs> um, Sorry. And uh, this was informational, no action, right? Correct. So maybe we should move on. We've got the two leases to sign. Correct. The Heartland Co op has the, we talked about. 50 bucks additional a month um, last year. We're expecting it. That's, that's in the um, that's in the amount. So do they pay on 12 months a year or just nine? I think it's 12 at this point. Is this <coughs> is this a different one than normal? I don't think so. Because it says here that they're responsible for snow removal. And uh, I guess it would be the third page of the co-op lease. Of which one? The co-op? Yeah. What do you see it now? Under utility costs and snow removal and rubber.
So the, that's us. So we pay all utility costs, oh, all right, including heat, electric, water, and sewer, and we're also responsible for snow removal. All right. That makes sense. Um, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it'll be the leasey. She'll pay utility costs, heat, electric, water, and sewer. Oh, I see it now. Yeah. Um, but since they're in the, um, they're right in the building, then. Yep. Unfortunately. So does the amount that's in here reflect the increase? Yep. Okay. My copies are clean. Your copies are clean, but they're front and back. That's okay. Front and back is okay. That's okay. So nobody uses those classrooms, do they, during the summer? Over the co-op one? So it's possible, you'd have to look at the language, it's possible that the co-op only pays the nine or 10, but the activity center we swapped over to 12. Right, so right, so I'm, I'm wondering about the co-op. Yeah, I can't remember. Well, if it's 12 months, it's 550 a month. Just say received after the 15th of month. First monthly payment shall be due on. Yeah, so it implies that it's 12 months. It implies. Right. Is there a board associated with the co-op? Yes. There is. Everyone good with me signing this again? I think we all have to sign it, right? No. Just got one place. You need a wedding. Oh, the call. Okay. Oh, um, it's kind of like the other one. The other one has us all on there, but I don't know if it makes a difference. What do you say? This one has us all. The call. Yeah. I mean the activity center. Okay. But the call is just Gordon. Yeah. Oh. Gordon, the only question I had on both, um, well, I have some on the activity center that will ask when we get there, but um, I'm not an insurance person, but it, it, are the insurances that are quoted for um, uh, adequate? We VLCTs looked into it. Okay. That's probably on that list we get every year, right? We get a list that of the values of the buildings for insurance purposes. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit separate, but um, the VLCT, as, well, it's it's part of the process. So they insure us, so they want to make sure that those that we're insuring or part of the insurance are equally insured. Mm -hmm. I'm good with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll sign this one and we'll move on. This is the color. doing that um, so Val Rainey uh, did reach out to me I told her I'd bring this to you guys <clears throat> so she's looking to put a uh, security system into their facility kind of like a push number keypad type thing um, wanted to know if we would 
be a part of that expense. Um, the cost is $3,250 to do that is to the front door. Um, I will put that out there. I go either way on the lease. There's parts of the lease that state that you know, anything that she needs to function, you know, on the interior is kind of up to her. Yeah, we take care of like the electrical and the plumbing and, and you know, items like that, um, more or less from a, almost like from an investment point of view, I think, you know, it's good that we, you know, are aware of the work that's being done and we take care of the electrical and the plumbing because that's part of the overall foundation and structure of the building. We want to maintain that. Mm -hmm. So where does this fall? Somewhere in between there. <laughs> I would say it's a little, I would say it's a little gray. Maybe that's why she wants to pay, wants to pay half. Is she asking for half? Half would be, half would make her day. I think we've put plenty of unbudgeted money into that building in the last year and we shouldn't put any more unless it's necessary. And I don't think it's necessary. Did she say why she thinks it's necessary at this time? She just thinks it's time that a child facility such as hers has a security system. You know just what this would do. It would make somebody that is a non-user of the facility. Um, right now, you can you know you drive by and walk in and say hi and say hi to everybody and leave you know or whatever you want to do. Um, this would make, uh, this would limit the access, so you would need to know the code in order to open the door and go in and say hi. Do we have a budget for how much we're going to spend on that? Building and repairs. Is that the one? I think this year, next year was like maybe seven grand. The painting will be, we're going to put a third coat on that, so that was five grand out of the seven. <coughs> going from memory, but I think it was seven. I, I don't know if I think of this as cost of doing business for them or, um, you know, in a way that's how I, I don't question and I don't want to get, get into questioning the need. Uh, I mean, I think I'm familiar with other child care centers uh, that have this already. They do? Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I, I don't, from a, is it a cost of doing business that Four corners should absorb, or this is something we should do. Sarah? I would say this is a cost of doing business. It's generally seen in the industry as a cost of doing business. There are some grants available that she may not know about that she could apply for for help in mm -hmm. that cost. I think, though, that when it's a town owned building, to come to you first before she does something like that is probably a logical step in the process. Mm -hmm. um, so for you to know that, to, for you to choose not to fund it, but to know that she's planning to do it, is probably not a bad outcome. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a plan to me. We sign the lease, and we ask her to look for Funding elsewhere. How would she okay. pursue that grant? She I call, call you. <coughs> that doesn't it. work. That's maybe we'll message. have to help her. Okay. Can we um, we can, read to it, this? Can taxes? She take the taxes. Right? I, I have a question. Okay. Is this another question? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm. Um, 
I realize that this, this is an agreement with a person who's doing business as a daycare, and the other agreement is with kind of a board slash co-op. Um, so does this have to get rewritten if in the middle of the year Val announces that she's heading down the Connecticut to the Atlantic and traveling the world or something? Um, you know, I, I don't, I, is there any reason for us to become, you know, to question that very first part of the agreement? To question what? Who we're making the agreement with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it seems we're making, we are making an agreement with an individual. And does that become null and void if that individual sells the business during the course of the year? Uh, it says right on the top as to who. Um, well, the second sentence does say the owner. Uh, so I would say, yeah, I mean, if she were to sell it, I would probably, unless it's got, um, it's got DBA, I'm sorry, it's got Valerie Rainey doing business as Four Corners Children's Center. So right. if somebody purchased Four Corners Children's Center incorporated. Um, you, said when, inc you said incorporated? Yep. Yeah. I mean, either way, we can cross that bridge and okay. have Mr. Mir Not Mammy, okay. have Rob Mammy just kind of run it by him and see what he says. Okay. Then I'm all separate. No, I don't think we know. <clears throat> we don't have any guarantees. That day will come at some point. Phil. Yeah. Next, I understand that there may be somebody um, that we fill that gap, but uh, that day will come. It's okay. probably in the next five years. Yeah, there's actually a fair amount going on. Um, again, in the spirit of just getting anybody up to date on things. Uh, so, three quarters of the intersection, as I wrote, everybody has signed an easement with an exception of Mr. White. Um, I do think that uh, we can work around that. Um, just know Tom has been in twice now. Uh, he has, actually has now read his easement. So there is maybe a glimmer of, of hope there. Uh, he's inquiring, he's asking questions, but, you know, um, revert back to the same conversation at the end of the day, but um, he has asked, um, is inquiring. Uh, highway department, so um, the paving is essentially complete. Uh, given our situation with the, um, the spring and our Bill being down. You may recall there was some discussion as to whether we were going to do the shoulder work or Pike was going to do the shoulder work. Um, we 
initially said, we'll do the shoulder work. We have touched base with Pike and said, please, you can do the shoulder work um, given our situation. So uh, the plan is for them to indeed do the shoulder work. It uh, does add to the cost. Uh, however, if you've noticed, um, we also did not go up County Road. We stopped um, at Brownsville Road. We were gonna go a little bit up County Road, um, just decided for couple reasons really to stop there one is just a good <coughs> stopping place rather than trying to stop on the hill going up towards County Road um, plus in the back of our minds um, we wanted to leave some working capital to do some patchwork on Queechee Road um, as we progress on Brownsville so um, that did that decision gave us some room to have them do the shoulder work but um, We've, we've consciously made that decision uh, last week. Uh, as I put in here, Mace Hill, um, the new grants and aid grants are out um, for next year. We're going to push Webster Road off um, until August. Uh, the rain has everybody kind of backed up, including the um, uh, contractor that was gonna do that work. Um, um, so that puts us into a new fiscal year and a, and a new grant. However, uh, Webster Road that we did a fair amount of work on last year essentially needs to be redone. Um, that um, did not hold up over the spring rains and um, uh, spring that we had in winter. Um, Rita went out on behalf of Two Rivers and, and you know, to close that, essentially the grant out and found, you know, what was out there, you know, due to the rains and et cetera, essentially unacceptable. Um, the ditching was shallow. Um, it didn't have the seven inch. Um, um, Minus our stone. Seven inch stone in there, so it did slide. So if you want to see a good example of why they do call for seven inch and why they make it want them deeper and wider, um, that's a prime example. Um, however, in defense of the project, uh, I was out there with uh, Matt Dow this morning. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of ledge out there, which makes uh, working in that area um, difficult to get the proper trenching, but I think we can do it. Um, so we may have lost the $6,500 that we put into that. Um, the only good silver lining here is that if we can do that job before the end of July, we can actually use the existing grant money that we had available for that job to do the redo. So I've done the work, we've looked at it. Um, we think we can do it and get it done. Um, so it makes sense to get it done, provided we can use that grant money and, and try and improve on what's there. How much distance are you talking about? Oh, boy, I don't know, 250 yards maybe? Oh. It's pretty good. One side of the road or both? Um, it, had some, some. it had some culvert work on, uh, it was primarily one side, um, but there was some culvert work on the opposite side as well, so. Um, there was, again, some lead, some trees in there. Um, I think that we can, um, I think we can get it to where it needs to be done and, and improve on what's there at the end of the day. Um, you're talking about uh, re redoing this section. Is that uh, our crew or is that a subcontractor? Uh, I, it, it, so the same person that did it, D&D &D excavating. Um, okay. I pulled, called Matt up um, last week. He agreed to meet me fairly quickly uh, this morning. Felt as though um, we went over and talked about the problems that he had and kind of what went wrong there. It certainly felt as though he deserved, you know, the, the ability to, you know, to, to do the work again. So uh, that's with D&D &D excavating. I did meet with uh, Windsor Police Chief and the school board. Um, uh, I did feel as though the bringing in 
or, or having a public input meeting I thought was um, was beneficial and uh, they are doing that I think it'll be a good discussion however that lands um, and that was kind of the bulk of, of that discussion um, Windsor can contract exclusively or directly with the supervisory union. Um, they have that option, but I certainly think that um, we should go into this, you know, open to whatever role the board decides to play. <laughs> uh, change of appraisal notices went out today. So you will be getting that tomorrow or the next day. So Mary, you can be you can it. take stock in the fact that the town is working for you <laughs> and that uh, we have reappraised your property and it's coming out. So there is that aspect of it. Wait, how does that affect me directly? Uh, From what I was saying before, it may or may not. You're going to find out. Okay. So if we, if we add the 5% to the tax rate in July, then, yes. you know, well, it'll affect you a fair amount. We'll have to, all right, there we go. But we're only going to do it to your house. <laughs> so you're going to carry the brunt of that entire bill. I just, really touched a nerve here today. I just, you know, oh, we're, we're losing steam here. I had to add a little okay. humor into the night. You know. Yeah, and, and Tom told me about that hemp processing plant you were putting in. <laughs> we got to raise the money for these taxes. God. I met with the engineer in the front of the uh, steps today um, regarding the steps. We're moving forward with that. Um, what goes around comes around. So the person it looks like that is going to do the work is Charlie Brennan, who we kind of started out with. Um, however, um, I feel good in the fact that Chris will be um, on hand. He feels fairly comfortable with the materials he's using, but um, you know, just we're going to have him do a mock-up. Essentially, he'll do like a side or maybe a quarter of it to you know make sure he's doing what he says he's going to do. Um, and we'll make the payments in quarters. So if for whatever reason, you know, he gets to that wall and it's not quite what we, you know, we're expecting, um, you know, we can move on from there. And if he's doing exactly what he should, you know, it says he's going to do, then we're all good and we continue to move forward. So when's that? What's that? When? Uh, Chris and Charlie were going to talk and try and set up um, a time schedule to move forward that's gonna be so this we'll, year we don't know when. it should be this summer okay. yeah it will be at some point and is it the wall and steps or just the wall steps are okay aren't they the steps were okay there is the they made patch on there is a cup in a couple places where the yeah. step and the wall meet that um the salt is eaten into and it's deteriorating so that needs to be addressed. Yeah, I like that approach. Uh, uh, you know, because this whole job is um, is you won't see the bulk of the work. You'll just see a, a, you know a, a skim coat over. Um, so I'm glad the engineer is involved with double checking the work. See how it comes out because we have other steps. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. That's all I got. Okay. Can rest. So we have. Um, does anyone else have anything you want to bring up? No, I'm exhausted. That's good. <laughs> What? We have to do executive session. Yeah. Um, just to make sure we're done. What we do. So, uh, just a minute. We, gotta go. we have to do it. Hang in there. Thanks for coming. Yeah, good night, Rob. Good night, Sarah.
Okay. I make the motion that premature general knowledge would clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage. And uh, well, we should we should say what we're doing. You haven't gotten to the second part. Oh. So someone needs to second that motion. I mean, I don't do that. What? I do it on the other ones. I don't do that. Oh, second and second. <laughs> you got these standards. They're so know. random. I have further move to enter executive session under the provision of Title One, Section 313A2 of the Vermont Statute. She just did. It's a real estate negotiation. A2 is a real estate negotiation. Okay. So, okay. Everybody go to that. I'll second that one. Okay. You're welcome, Mark, though. No, you're good to this? I'm good. Yeah,